So, we're back again and we're going to go over the rules. Back when I started my 50 BMG project, I made a, I don't know what you'd call it, it wasn't a bet, but I set out to achieve a certain set of goals and I said, hey, here's what I want to do that's never been done. I want to make a lightweight 50 BMG that shoots quarter minute, with the biggest thing being shoots quarter minute. I don't think anybody's ever did that. Some of the other shooters on the internet, it's funny how what the internet does. People make all kinds of claims on the internet. But one of the biggest shooters and experimenters on the YouTube shoots F class and on his belly and here and there has several times through the years used this quarter minute accuracy thing. Well, quarter minute accuracy is really, really, really hard. And true quarter minutes accuracy, we're talking about five consecutive groups to form a 25 round aggregate of five five shot groups. And they all average under 0 0.250 MOA. Now to win with a PPC, when we left off the last time, this is marked PPC accuracy. PPC accuracy is actually tenth minute. We're talking about accuracy here that normal people will never see. I'd love for them to, and maybe through this and other mediums. But uh, it was funny to watch one of the big personalities back down and go, I need to, I need to qualify a little here. This quarter minute MOA is something we've thrown out. We're going to this way. And he made a comment in that there's certain cartridges like the 50 BMG where you'll never achieve it. That's just stupid. And, uh, you know, certain big cart hunting cartridges and three shot and blah, all these qualifications. Well, unqualifiedly, right now at 600 or 1,000 yards, you've got to shoot quarter minutes. So there are 30, 40 people in the world doing it. But they're doing it with a certain set of parameters. There's got to be a heavy gun. you got to got to have the weather. you got to... What I'm attempting to do here, and what I'm saying changed in 2019, is that a new, a new product debuted. And I'm only gonna, I kind of left off the last one with just giving you a few hints, hoping you'd figure it out. It's been a week or so now, and uh, I'm gonna tell you what it is, and I'm gonna open the ball, and I'm gonna get us started down this latest road. Which part of me feels like the whole last three years have been nothing but preparation for what we're doing now. Um, and this can end up being something like that. But let's start with the fact that we want to shoot 600 to 1,000 accurately. More accurately than we're doing right now. We got some pretty good stuff out there, but there are places to go. And I think we finally reached a point where, based on all the prior work, let's start with the fact that the PPC is flat out the typification, the personification, the epitome of the most accurate thing on the planet. It's more accurate than my laser transits. But that doesn't change the fact that it's limited by certain things. The 6PPC and its buddies, the BRs, are 100 to 200 yard accurate. Let that sink in. They're so small that they're only good to a couple hundred yards. You can't physically push a big enough bullet. Now that's changing a little. I proved that the PPC will push 108 grain 6 millimeter to 2700. And they can be purpose built to hit 28, 2900. But they're burning so hot and so radically and so furiously and slamming so hard at that point that they're actually not acting like a PPC anymore. The PPC is hot, it's fast, it's 80,000 PSI, it's high pressure, pushing against the back of a little bullet. 
And that's important. You're pushing against the back of a little bullet. A bullet with a low BC, i.e. a little bullet, is no good out at a thousand. So somehow we need to get a bigger... Now, understand this. 80,000 PSI is nothing to sneeze at. For normal people, normal guns, normal sized cases, let's take your aught six size cases, just right smack in the middle, 308s and 243s and 22 250s down, and you got your magnums going up. But the maximum working operating pressures you see is about 65,000, and that's normally with cases that have been designed, purpose built designed. I remember when the 338 Lapua mag and the 338 and 300 Norma mag cases, they reformulated the brass, they thickened the case heads, they made the brass case bigger, better, tougher, and they ran the parameters up to 65,000 PSI. And they made high performance cases. And if you go out and find a 600 Nitro or a big Jeffries or something that you can get the same size as a 338 Lapua mag, you can't load it up because the cases won't hold it. You need a custom-built 338 Lapua Magnum case to handle the pressure to push that big bullet. There's really no good way to cheat it. There are no other cases out there. Um, and sometimes the companies, just as an aside, get in trouble because when the 300 WSM came out, they redesigned the case and they said that it was going to be a 300 win mag beater. And they actually loaded and ran stuff, factory stuff, and especially in the, uh, the Remington did it in their SAUM short action ultra mag. And uh, anyway, the point is that we are at the peak. We are at the height of case design. And to try get a truly big cartridge case to push a truly big bullet, you can't run this kind of pressures. Um, when I say it's a proof load, I know proof testing people that their equipment won't even run over 80, 90,000 PSI. So if we really truly want to do 600 yard stuff and run it like a PPC, we need to get up to 80,000 pounds. Now we also have to have a case. We've got to make a good case that'll still run 80,000 pounds and be maintainable. You got to be able to make the case from a parent case I'm writing this stuff down so that you can see it. You need to make a pair. In the case of this, when Paul Monsanto and Pendell set out to make the PPC, they went on a worldwide hunt. They said, okay, we don't care where it comes from or what it is. We need a case that exhibits these certain characteristics. It'll run at a super high pressure and blah, blah. And they ended up using, in the case of the 6 PPC, they used a Russian sniper case. <clears throat> they used a 220R, the 220 Russian, which is an extremely small case with high pressure to make it more effective out there. So that's, and, and that, at that time, they were at the point I am right now, today, this day, this video series, I'm going to propose something similar. I'm going to propose a complete rewriting of the rules. A complete change of the paradigm. So you have to have a parent case, and then you have to have a way to make your thing from the parent case, which requires forming and all kinds of crap. Then when you start shooting, you've got to maintain that parent case. That means you want to get more than one round out of it. The PPC you make from the 220R. And then as time has gone on, they started out, the whole thing started out with neck size only. And that'll let allow the gun to shoot to its capacity at 3,250 feet per second. But 
then they found out that you want to push these little squidgy bullets faster and harder. There's a tiny incremental change in its ability to get through the wind, but more so than that, as the pressure goes up, 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 the vibrational stability, for lack of a better term, also goes up. The gun runs better at high pressure. Just like a car runs better at the top of its envelope. And currently we don't have something to do that in 600 and 1,000 yards. So you got to make it, you got to pick something to make it from, you got to maintain it. Those are the, and you have to do it with a big enough case that you can push bullets that are useful at 600 and 1,000 yards. And there is another little known thing that a lot of people never, I mean, there's about a dozen other, I don't know how far down into the weeds that we're going to get, because the PPC checks all the boxes. It really can't be improved on. We tried, we built from the ground up a whole new system, 6BR and all of it, and the, the 6BR got shortened and lengthened and blown. Right now, the current, Arguably the current winning bench rest cartridge at 600 and 1,000 is still based back on that 6BR case, but they really destroy it because they cobble together and they blow the shoulder forward and they make it larger in an attempt to gain enough case capacity. And to a certain extent, the winningest light gun cartridge on the planet right now, and some would even say in the heavy gun, the winningest thing at a thousand, at 600 yards is something called the six dasher, which is an abortion. It's a mess. There are so many things wrong with it that need to be approached that it frightens me. And in fact, since then, we've got a new case. And this problem's been gone going for a while. It is a good time to be alive. Not that many years ago, 20 years ago or so, this conundrum was coming up, 600 was coming on, and I begged and I prayed and I yelled and I hollered and I called and I sent letters and I tried to get um, cases that didn't exist. I bought some old, because, well, let's, let's just start with ignition characteristics. Ignition characteristics, I'm going to have to back up, because, or else I'm going to get out in the weeds, because this all ties together. The size of the primer, you get two commonly available primers, small and large, and then you got flash hole sizes varying across the spectrum from 60,000 diameter to 80,000 diameter. Well, in the same way that a garden hose controls water flow and different sized orifices give you different results, there's an argument to be made that a smaller flash hole will give you a longer burning, higher pressure, deeper penetrating, more consistently burning flame front that injects itself into the cartridge and causes it causes the powder granules to stir up better. Um, there's very little argument that a Forget that I said that. That's cheesy. There are people that believe, and I'm one of them, that the size of the flash hole makes a huge difference regarding ignition characteristics. And there have been a bunch of work done in this area by various people um, where they photograph primer blasts in the dark and they photograph primer blasts through different conditions, varying the size of the flash hole. Back in the 90s, I was on Bench Rest Central pleading with the community at large if I could buy or if anyone made or if someone could tell me if they've ever played with bushing flash holes because the cases that I could get for a thousand all had big primers and big flash holes. That makes the case weaker so that the case itself cannot help but fail before it reaches the 80,000. They fail at 60,000 and below. 
So there's a strength issue there, but just on the subject of ignition characteristics, I contend that the smallest possible flash hole allows one. It meters less gas in and less case head expansion. I mean, we can go all over. It's all true. There are so many reasons the PPC works that I have to limit myself to bit by bit or I'll just overload people and glaze over. Right now we're talking about trying to hit the 80,000 PSI. Have to have a parent case that allows us to do that. We're going to get into, if this proceeds, we have to maintain that. It's a known thing that uh, I can shoot a PPC case a hundred times over at 80,000 PSI. And I've proven recently I can shoot 50 BMG cases at 65, 70,000 PSI, which is kind of their max because there's so many more PSIs. That understanding of the difference between 80,000 PSI of pressure And 80,000 pounds can't be overstated. The 50 BMG is a low pressure case. <coughs> you have to run it up to 180,000 pounds to get the metals to yield that you build the gun from. But you increase the square inches and in the same way that you can blow through a soda straw into a balloon and pick up a car like a car jack. Hydraulics are a real thing. Um, as you get up to a case the size of the 50 BMG, you don't want to run it at 80,000 PSI because that's starting to stress the actual components, the actual build of the gun, as that Serbu that blew up just showed. It, it wasn't even a high pressure load, the thing that blew that up. It's going to go all over the inner tube and there's going to be stuff blatted all about. But all that happened there was a case ruptured inside the chamber and let the pressure out and it spread itself over more square inches at the back of that thing and you take 40,000 pounds and apply it over five, six, seven, eight, and it pressures, it hydraulics, it blows especially when it has nowhere for the gas to go but that's a different story here we're talking about all safe components, all conventional and we're fine. 80,000 is perfectly safe in the size cases we're talking about up to 308, maybe even up to 06-ish. Not magnums, but pushing big enough, heavy enough bullets to get through the wind, to get through the atmosphere, to get to... So, I just wanted to explain that what we're going to try to do right now is get... We need to find a case, and we'll have to learn how to maintain that case. But that case has to be able to push a big bullet... 100 grain, 120 grain, 130 grain, 140 grain, hopefully faster than we're able to right now. Run the pressure up like a PPC for the ignition character, the burning character at 6 or 8. Um, find out whether or not, get a primer that will that will produce stable ignition characteristics. It's not important that they be hotter or colder than another one, but you need to have stable, you need to be able to do it. So in that light, the flash holes have to be identical. One of the first things you learn when you try to reload for accuracy is about deburring flash holes and chamfering flash holes and modifying flash holes and cleaning up your primer brackets and get all these things to... So this is ignition characteristics. So, it takes that to get us started, and it takes a parent case of some sort to use to get that started. And in 2019, Sig Sauer debuted a new case called the Sig Fury. This is what all my fuss is about. It says the next generation of ammo. You can see on the box there, and we'll explore this farther, that's got a steel case head. The impetus for this, the thing that started this, was that they're trying to... 2019, they started... 2018. Um, 
2017, they started pushing for a new military cartridge, and many times this is how the new stuff gets started. I saw them talking about this, and I'll never build it as a 277 Sig Fury. In the same sense that I have never built a 6.5x47 Lapua. But when that case arrived, I was ecstatic, and I immediately ordered a whole bunch of them, and I built sixes and thirties out of them that are astounding tons of prior work so as soon as this case showed up i got excited i waited about a year to see what was going to happen i waited and i called and i called and i waited and powder valley is my supplier and i did everything i could do to find out what's it going to take to get some sig fury brass well, what it takes is you buy a $100 box of ammunition and you take it apart. You ruin it. But the result is that I've got some of these Sig Fury cases. Now, as I said, I will never build it. I don't have any use for a 277 in this power range. Even though this little case, it's not a big case. And this little guy outperforms actually I think I probably have a case here somewhere there we go this little guy outperforms the 270 on paper it's supposed to be all that but that's not the point I had to get some in my hot sweaty hands and I did and I paid retarded money and then ripped them apart to get some cases and now we're gonna take this case and we're going to convert it to a couple of known cases. One will be the 6x47 Lapua. Known winning case, which is the dasher done right. And the other one's going to be the 6x5 Creedmoor. These are both known. We know what we can do with the Creedmoor, and more so with the 6x47. I can do ridiculous things with the 6x47. And the Creedmoor was designed from the ground up as a performance round, and it set the whole world on fire. It really is all cool like that, but it's not an L cartridge. I mean, there's a lot of things it's not, but it's cool. So, we're going to start down the road of taking this Fury cartridge to places it's man's never gone before. So now you know what we're starting on, and it's going to be a big journey, but we're going to get there. We're going to be firing these bad boys.